Good morning. So uh, today we are going to look at improve error messages in the Snippet Pixie CI. <clears throat> so at the moment, um, if I try and add a snippet which already exists, <clears throat> excuse me, I get um, like a cryptic message back when really I should be doing things like that abbreviation already exists. So let's try that out. First of all, I need a copy. <clears throat> so let's go here. So um, I think this should be okay. Um, so if I if I list things with Wibble in the name, you can see I've got Wibble backtick. If I do um, add, I quote it because I've got a backtick. Uh, some new Wibble thing. So I'm adding a snippet, which should expand to some new Wibble thing. I should, fingers crossed, get an error. Yeah. And that's not great. Um, it would be much better if it said that abbreviation already exists. So let's try and do that. I'm not sure how easy this is going to be. Um, I'm probably just going to have to sort of pre-test um, whether, um, you know, do upfront tests in the CLI as opposed to the backend daemon, which is where the error is coming from at the moment. So let's, well, let's do that one case and then we'll start mucking about um, and see if we can find any others. So add snippets. At the moment, all we're doing is calling the add snippets service, um, which basically just passes that new abbreviation and body string um, straight through to the backend daemon, which is uh, a debuff server. Um, and then that's going to return the uh, error. So if we look in snippet pixie D uh, in the debuff side of things, we have an add snippet service here, which takes an abbreviation and body. Um, and it just goes straight in and does, right, okay, let's start a database um, transaction um, and then just tries to add the snippet. Um, and then fails and returns it basically. Um, and in the add snippet function, all it's doing is creating a new snippet um, and then doing an insert. And then of course the insert's gonna fail. Um, yeah, so basically it's doing that. It fails because we've got a unique constraint on the table which isn't great. Um, so I think the best way to go about this is probably to test whether it really exists in CLI before trying. Um, otherwise, um, I guess we could do it. on the daemon level. We could do the test before the insert. Then any client would just get a reasonable error message back. Hmm. That might make more sense. We could even do that at the debuff side of things, where the uh, before even doing a transaction. Oh, actually, no, we do need to do a transaction because I believe the get 
um, is yeah committed read isn't it is it no No, it's not. Okay. Interesting. What did I do on the GUI? Let's just double check that. Because I know. Let's do a quick search. That. Oh, is it capital? That abbreviation already exists, and I've got that on abbreviation exists. Can I? No, okay. Right, where am I using that? I am using that, of course, in add. I'm also using it in edit. So on the GUI front end, we have a try block. Where I do a get snippet with abbreviation. If it exists, I say, go away, you've already got one. And then the same again on the edit. I do the same thing and just check that the ID isn't the same. Hmm. Okay. So the one wrinkle here is, having looked at this, I should really be doing translatable strings on the daemon side of things as well, daemon and CLI, but I haven't quite got to that yet. So we maybe have to come back and do a bit of a clean up. Which is fine, we could do that. We could do a refactor later to do uh, translatable strings for the CLI. Stroke, maybe, daemon, we'll see. Okay, so we have get snippet with abbreviation here, which we can call um, in the, it's like a internal package. Uh, it's all because it's all databases stuff. We could either we could either call the DVOS service from the CLI and check it. Or we could effectively do it in the add snippet. And go, nope. Because we wouldn't expect it to exist yet. have to be careful here though because of transactions and if we're in the process of doing
doing an import as such, which also renames. Any abbreviations. Ordering is then important. Okay. It's a long time since I looked at the sync stuff. I just need to double check. I just want to make sure that I put it in the right place and don't put it too low that it causes issues but not so high that I have to repeat it over and over and over again when I could make it a little bit of a set it and forget type issue. So in the sync, start a transaction, right, get the current snippets, start a transaction, I passed in a bunch of snippets and some options. Right, check the separate way it exists, okay. That'll be some geese then. So if we have a snippet coming in and it has an ID, check the current snippets. If the current snippet is a match, we are good there. Otherwise, Get it just on abbreviation. If we're not doing any updates, skip it, but we are in this scenario, maybe. So if we have a snippet that matched Switching the current ID, if we didn't get one. So if the abbreviations changed, or the body's changed, or the last user's changed, update the snippet ID with that I. Okay. That's okay but it's still within transaction. So I can definitely not put it into insert snippet, that's for sure. Because we'll be in a transaction and we can't do the, it will clash potentially. It's too low level. But there's nothing there to stop me from doing it on the add snippet, which is a higher level. Do it and be done.
think that's okay. I think the D bus. The D bus server is basically our business logic. It can do the check there. There's nothing else which is public that could cause an issue. Everything else is internal. On the snippet side of things, it's very low level here. We're just getting strings and stuff, so I think we're okay. I think we can do that. So, cleaning up these. I'm going to take that for the moment, and then at some point, I'm going to have to make this translation stuff. Um, more usable throughout the project. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick upfront test here. So, um, what do we get back from that? Hmm, I could do this. In fact, can basically do this. Yeah, but in reverse. So we're going to do get the snippet with abbreviation. If there's an error, better check. Does that do a nail check? Right, if there's not found, it's nil-nil. So that's good for me. Otherwise, we have an issue. Here. Already exists. If the snippet is not nil, then we need to make a new error. How have I done that before? Nobody done it here. No stringy stuff. Uh, 
Oh, just that one. I will do a combination of those then. I'll do um, uh, Dbus make failed error. There is new uh, what's there? text now. Let's just go grab it. Just to, yeah, that's going to be an issue. Okay. This can be nil. Can it not? Yeah. Okay, so the change is that when we call the dbus add snippet, it's going to do a quick test to see whether the abbreviation already exists. If there's an error doing that test, we get the error back. Can't really avoid that. Um, otherwise, if we don't have a nil coming back from that check, uh, therefore, the snippet already exists. We're going to return an error. Uh, that abbreviation already exists. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so we have a daemon here. So I'll just make. In fact, we'll do a make test as well, just in case. No, we're good. Um, bring back up the daemon. And then in here, uh, make shouldn't do anything. Make test shouldn't make any difference. And then when I do an add, should still fail, but should have a better message than unique constraint failed. There you go. That abbreviation already exists, but lowercase. This is why it would be better doing it at the CLI level. Go always assumes that error messages are going to be part of some sort of um, wrapped error message, like error. Hmm. It's better than what we got. <laughs> Not sure it's great though. I 
And what can I do instead? I guess I've got to make the decision as to whether the debuff should have that kind of business logic in it or not. Because what else am I doing in here? I'm doing the copy, but that's kind of low level. So is the paste. Mm. Yeah, I could keep it as a fairly low level. Deal. And then it's up to the CLI to interpret things or do the right thing like test before trying to insert as such. Like we're already doing the GUI. There's flexibility in that. People can do things that Or at least try and do things that the debus service might not expect. And it could certainly get around things like having a clash on an import and so instead you do an update and then do the import and things like that. Hmm. It's just so easy to do it here. Okay. Let's take it out. Bring it back up. Oh, there's another thing here. The name, com dot blah blah blah. Again, that's something that I should be doing in the CLI. Yeah, the CLI needs more work on these things more than anything. Okay, let's do that. Let's bring it into the CLI and see how it goes. Uh, so actually
So there's another level. The GUI and CLI to do the dbus chat to the daemon, they both use this internal package called the service. And they call, hey, go call the dbus server for me to do an ad snippet with this abbreviation and body and get back a snippet and an error rather than a dbus snippet because we have you can't you can't send like a uid and uh, a date in their more form across dbus you have to make them string basically um so there's nothing to stop me from doing the nicest stuff in there but we do still have that issue of catching the error and go wanting errors to look like errors so it wouldn't be Great. So and it's yeah. And it's changing the way that an otherwise kind of clean implement implementation it's getting business logic mixed in when it probably shouldn't do i even have tests on that no Oh yeah, I can't. That's part of the problem, isn't it? Because it's calling the debus stuff. And it gets a bit messy then. Okay, let's do the most basic thing here. And shadowing error across there as well. That's not good. Let's fix that. Hmm. That's why I did that. Now it's not fixed that for the moment. We'll come back to that. So I'm going to get a snippet with that abbreviation. Now 
if we have an error, we're going to return it. If the snippet is not equal to nil, we will return errors. See, this can be the same issue, isn't it? I'm just moving it all up there. Oops. I still, I do need to return an error here because I want to catch it when we call run and print it to standard error. That might be the best solution to do it in the DBus server itself, to put the business logic there. That's the gateway. And what I need to do here Let's make this more explicitly. Uh, Maybe a little bit, a little bit shouty, maybe. Um, yeah. We will see. Okay, so Damon up. Hmm. 
I'm in two minds. I guess the good thing about prefixing with that is that should things like this come through, it's very clear what the problem is, that, well, that it is a problem. And then nothing happened. So if we look at the error code, we should have something here. Okay, what happens? Just catching that. If we do remove and then we do again. It's fine because it's just there's no, there's nothing to do. If we list, it's got definitely gone. Now, if we add again, and try again. It's just as expected. think yeah I think it's a good idea doing on the dbus service here because I can test it as well so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to test that it fails I'm going to do a second one um, so I guess I just need that. Test that. in a 
Kurt Mayers. Does that add in a duplicate? Abbreviation fails. I did that. Okay, okay, okay. Do that. Right, I keep forgetting that this is a D bus service. Ever. So. I have to be careful here. So. Is true. Error is not equal to nil. So this is in Daemon. So make and make test. That passes. If I now I'll just do that to break it. Not true, error equals nil. Although, what I really want to do is check that it gets the right message. So, um, Is that right? Are they going to get me a string? Okay, we will see. Pass. Okay. Uh, if I just stick an exclamation mark at the end so it fails to make sure. Yep. That abbreviation already exists is what we've got back. But I've said that should have an exclamation mark and it doesn't, so that's good. So that's alright then. Okay. I think that's better. I think it's good that I can test sort of business logic there oh, it's like the most minimal <laughs> don't, don't add a duplicate but it's good that i can test it not the interface between any client The only thing I don't like is how Go prefers that you have lowercase text. That's very strange. But 
we will live with it for the moment. Okay, I think that's that one done. Uh, I'll save that off. Do I want to check any others before I save it? Well, I didn't find any other problems, did I? Um, so let's run that. And then on the CLI. What can we do? Um, Make sure that's okay. Let's do Right, so this should fail because of, well, because there's no body, let alone duplicate. Yeah, okay. Now that happens high enough that it's caught as a CLI issue, which is fine. And if I try and do this, it'll catch it as CLI issue, hopefully. Yeah. If, if I were to add spaces, that would actually work, I think, because that is allowed. Ooh. It's kind of useless, but it's caught. Interesting, actually. Could I do... Hmm. I can't think of a way of defeating at the moment. That's probably okay. It's kind of useless. What else can I do? If I... What else can I do? I can't really do... Well, if I do snippet pixel on its own. Can't expand something that doesn't exist. So, can I do expand? Oops. Yeah, there's nothing to expand, so it's fine. Same for copy. It does the same thing, basically. Snip it pixie export. Uh, 
and do a snippet pixie import without anything. I'll tell me to go away. If I give it a file. I haven't actually got that set up. Hmm. Interesting. It's not in the usage. I need to fix that. There's a bunch of things wrong with this, actually. I mean, why why did I put ping as a flag? It should be a command. We've got import and export here because that's legacy. We, we need that for backwards compat. And unfortunately, that means the force as well. I don't think we need status though. All right, so now I'm running this is. Why is that not to complete it? No. Oh. Right, <laughs> that's fine. Go back. So the old one is com. Oh no, it's like yeah, yeah. Uh, if I do that, we we'll get that. Okay. But do I have a status? I do. Okay. So I've got to keep that because version has to stay. But ping does not exist. Right, I am going to make some changes here. I am going to, for starters, let's try that. That's better. And then I'm uh, just going to get rid of that. Just going to commit. I think that's, I mean, it's the only one I've found. So I think we're good.
Okay. And now, presumably that's done. Yep. I am going to add a couple of little things for next time because I should probably be done now. So, CLI. Move ping command. No. Make ping flag command instead. Um Add positional file name back to import usage. What else did I find? So help import, that doesn't even exist, doesn't even work. What? Okay. Export works. All right, so basically import is completely broken on the help. Okay, I'm adding more to do's. This is growing. Um, what else do I need to do? Let's go through them all. So, help add. That's okay. Copy. Okay, another one that's not working. Expand works. Looks okay. All right, double check. Export. I think that's okay. 
Right, we know that import is not working. List. It's been a while. Okay, so that's all working there. And there's the search string at the end. If I actually take that out and try Pokemon one, get the same. That's good. And then remove. Okay, that's fine. And if I do that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we've got a couple of things to do there. Um, if I do ping, I've already set it up. No, okay. But ping itself does work. Yeah. All right, we have to do's. So next time I'm just gonna do some quick and dirty cleanups of all these help um, things and move the, the ping command to where it should be because it's a brand new command. I don't need to have it as a flag. That's for legacy stuff. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think that's enough for today. So, um, thanks for watching. Uh, until next time, take care.